Hello YouTube, this is Frono. 24 hour challenge, we try to build as many good farms in 24 hours as possible. Part 6. And we've got iron, we've got a universal mob farm, we got sugarcane, pumpkins, cobble, a trading hall, a villager breeder, a slime farm over there. But what's glaringly missing is a tree farm. Because I don't know how many wood I have chopped here. Way too many. And it's time to go to the first design from Ian XO4, who is a master of doing farms that are very easy to build but still have pretty good rates. And I've already prepared most of the stuff that I need. So we'll need some item filters, we need some hoppers, some scaffolding, and of course building blocks. And again, I recommend using Light Medica. Now we could, for example, set up this farm here. We have a nice flat surface. Ian has done a fantastic tutorial for this farm, so I won't have to tell you a lot about it. But what I will do, I will use a slightly larger water collection, because I plan to build other farms on the sides. So let's gr get cracking. And while I will just link Ian's tutorial for the building part, I will tell you why I choose this farm. It's simply because it's the only farm that, with little modification, can produce any type of tree except dark oak. And that's still at pretty good rates, usually around 4 shulkers per hour, depending on the wood type. And if you use nether trees, then you can compost a lot of the warped and crimson blocks, and this is very, very bone efficient. And it took me under one hour to knock out this farm, which is really great value. So let's talk about the little changes that I did. First, the clock has a different on-off switch, because the original clock could explode the TNT duper if you spam the lever to turn the farm on and off a bit. Also, the output does not go directly into chests, but over a series of item filters that we can configure, for example for warped blocks, to compost the blocks that we can compost if we do nether trees, and then it goes into a small chest silo. The item filters have to be reconfigured if we switch the wood type, for example from warped fungi to crimson fungi, but that's easily done. Later, I imagined we will build a central storage, where we compost everything that has to be composted, and store everything that has to be stored. So I imagine at some point we will rewire all of these water streams that I'm setting up here. The crucial thing here is that the water stream still goes under the player, so the player can automatically replenish any saplings from overworld trees. Another small change is that the bone meal supplies comes from a crafter that decompresses either bones or bone blocks. So we can go to our universal mob farms, pick up the bones, and fill them into the double chest that we will set up here. With a little clock that activates if the dropper containing the bone meal runs dry. So that's another nice thing in practice. If you stop the tree farm and you have still bone meal in your inventory, you can just put it back into the dropper, which will not be full. Also, this farm has a great TNT duper that doesn't need any slime or sticky pistons. So you can build it very early in the game and it's dirt cheap. The water collection here is 17 wide and we can make it 17 deep or even deeper. So on both sides and the opposite side of the tree farm we can build other contraptions, for example a basalt generator. Note that this farm is a bit directional, so even though you can rotate it, from what I understand, the rates might suffer a bit. So it's probably the best if you keep the orientation that Ian has in his Lightmedica file or in his world download. So let's grab some bones. So this farm does have a crafter, so you can fill bones or bone blocks in here. Building this farm took about 50 minutes. And harvest the remaining birch trees, so that we get a few saplings. Let's turn on the farm. And we have 25 saplings, okay. Let's use our inventory as a filter for now. And of course, use some dirt block there. Let's give it a go. So we need to flip off this lever here. And we should have a ton of birch.
Very nice. Of course, the more bone meal efficient way to build this would be to build a nether tree farm. And for nether tree farms we don't get any saplings or mushrooms if we break this tree, so we need a mushroom farm. So let's build that. And this little fungus farm here is my own design. I guess it's nothing special, it's very similar to other designs out there. It's fairly fast, it produces over 9000 fungi per hour, depending on which nylium you put in the middle, either the crimson or the warp variant. And I integrated a crafter, so you can also feed it with bone blocks or bones, so you don't have to craft anything up from our universal mob farm. And the dispenser fires every six game ticks, so it's piston pushing to one side, dispenser fires, piston pushes to the other side, dispenser fires again. And then we have an etho hopper clock on the outside, firing roughly once every 20 seconds, flushing the fungi into a water collection. The water collection goes over item filters, filtering out the fungi, composting the rest and compressing the bone meal to bone blocks in one of the output chests here. So from the water collection the items go into a soul set elevator and then over the usual item filters, once again AB configuration so they can pick up almost a full stack and then the rest goes into composted because all that is produced in this farm can be composted to bone meal. Okay, so this fungus farm took all of 25 minutes. Now let's stock it. I think we need to initialize the crafter first. So in the crafter go either bones or bone blocks. And let's maybe grab a double chest. There we go. And as the farm works, this crafter will craft the bones to bone meal and pump it into this dispenser. Then we have the usual shifting floor design, so let's see what happens. We generate a lot of fungi. Once every 20 seconds or so we will flush the whole area and all of the stuff is, will go down. And of course one should totally convert the ice to water. Otherwise this won't work. Okay, we get a soul sand elevator. Okay, this should be barely sufficient. So we have two filters each for the crimson fungi and the warped fungi. And we have as usual our AB configuration filter. Well, these filters, the way they are configured, can pick up 62 items at a, at a time. Right now we have warped blocks in the middle, so we generate mostly warped fungi. But we can replace this with crimson nylium and then we get crimson fungi. And everything else except the fungi will be composted and piped into a crafter who crafts the bone meal to bone blocks. Of course we still have a net loss on bone meal, so this farm uses more bone meal than it produces, but that's alright. Now we can configure our tree farm for warped wood. So with the fungi that we have we can produce huge mushrooms. And I've already configured the item filters for the composters with the warped warped blocks. So we'll get a ton of those. And I think for warped wood that's pretty much it. If you do the crimson trees you will get some of the shrubbery that we can also configure there. But I think now we have also fire resistant wood. So here we have our item filters. We are probably now overwhelmed, but we can check this in a moment. We have a few that are still not configured. And we can check in the output chest if there's something else that we need composted. But right now that's okay. And now our fungus farm has been running for maybe five minutes. So let's check the output chest. Plenty of fungi. And we already got those here. So I think this farm will have to run for maybe 20 minutes and then a double chest will be full. And we get also a few of the crimson. So that's it for the tree farm. 
we have now as much wood as we want. And of course, the nether wood trees will be very bone meal efficient. All right, we have two hours left, so let's see what we can do. Maybe the next task that we'll tackle should be to solve our, our food issues. So what about a little hogland farm? I saw a crimson biome rather close to my nether portal. And of course we can buy ender pearls from our clerics to get on the roof. So let's have a look. So let's grab a few ender pearls. So let's try to find a roof block. Oh, we are lucky. This one is 127. So just press space. And the pearl up and we are on the roof. Let's have a look at the biome borders. We're in the middle of a crimson forest so this farm shouldn't take more than 10 minutes. And I last built this farm in 119 at which time soul campfire still worked for Hoglands. I made a tutorial for this farm once but basically you just build a platform where the Hoglands can spawn and you put in a few warped fungi on the outside which will force them to the inside and they think they can walk over the trap drawers so they will go onto this inner structure and there again they will be repelled by the warp fungi and think they can go far away from them on top of the drop chute which leads to the kill chamber. Each of these platforms is 7 blocks wide. On the outside you plant a few blocks where you can place fungi on like dirt or grass and on the inside trap drawers. And you can of course extend this, you could make more platforms around that and force the hoglins to the middle, that's fine. This is a very cheap farm and very efficient. So let's light up these platforms. We need light level 12, which actually requires quite a bit of torch spam. Again, if you miss one spot, then it's probably not too bad. But we try to not get a lot of piglins in there. But I was in for another nasty surprise. Because when I last built this farm, I would get cooked pork chop and leather, but now it appears we get raw pork chop. So something in the mechanics has changed, but fortunately there's a way around this. So let's just break these campfires and grab a lava bucket. We need another portal on the roof, of course, to get back. So let's grab a few signs and a bucket of lava. And maybe we should just build another portal to access the roof directly. So let's quickly manufacture a bit more obsidian. We need 10. And just build another portal at around y equals 128. And then this portal will link up to the roof. Just a bit of a landing platform. There we go, fast track to our Portland farm. So let's use a few fire resistant signs here. And the idea is to have lava on top, which will kill the hoglands. Right, this is looking good. Now hopefully we should get cooked pork chops. Let's give it a try. And maybe let our friend Steve AFK for a bit. Okay, about one hour later. So these are maybe not industrial amounts, but quite enough pork chops that we are supplied for quite a while. So this is pretty good. All right, our food problems are over. Let's also grab a bit of leather, which is also a nice drop here, and get back to the overworld. Hockland farm done. Our friend Steve AFK at our universal mob farm. So we have 59 minutes left which is a bit less time than I expected, because I was hoping to build a gold farm. And I used the last 20 minutes to collect the resources for that, including a few turtle eggs. And the design will be once more by Ian X04, because this is a pretty efficient portal-based gold farm that can be built rapidly. So let's see if we can find a good nether waste biome. And once more, Ian has done a fantastic tutorial, so I will only give you the cliff notes. You need to find an area about 32 by 32, all in the nether waste biome, dig out two platforms that are too high 
In the middle we'll place a turtle egg and the ziglins or zombified piglins will be lured to the turtle egg and go through a nether portal onto an overworld elevator. Now the turtle egg comes last because at this time we don't want any ziglins interfering with the build. And this gold farm is reasonably close to our two nether portals so we don't need to use separate access portals. In the overworld it's just 500 blocks to fly and the overworld bridge are just a couple of portals connected with a few building blocks where the ziglins will push each other from one portal to the other. And I did make a few changes to the kill area because I wanted a collection system with an autocrafter so we'll get gold blocks. So here we have the usual ice pusher and a few item filters and the nuggets go into auto crafters which craft them to ingots and the ingots are crafted to blocks and the blocks will end up in these two double chests in the output there. The height of the kill chamber is the same so the player has to stand on a block that is at level y equals 244. And the ziglins are dropped onto cobwebs so that the player has 20 seconds time to kill them using an armor stand and sweeping edge sword, but the drops will go through and be pushed over the item filters. And the redstone blocks and the iron trapdoors are to separate the players from the ziglins reliably. If you use wooden trapdoors, you might accidentally open them and the ziglins might kill you. On top we have another turtle egg and a few trapdoors. The ziglins think they can go over the trapdoors to the turtle egg and will come out of the portal and fall into our killing trap. And once the kill chamber is ready, we can place the turtle egg in the spawning platform to lure the ziglins in. And that's pretty much the farm done. Well, 23 hours, 59 minutes. I managed to build a gold farm, but I didn't manage to check it out. The player hits this armor stand with a sweeping edge sword. And we are 24 hours, 1 minute. And I think with all the time I stopped and gave you explanations, we're good to go. So let's see what happens below. There we are. Ziglins go into the portal. And here we just have to hit the armor stand. And in a moment the Ziglins will come out of the portal here. Because I'm stupid, I left my carpet bot Steve standing here. Now the Ziglins won't despawn, but let's show you a rundown of what we have built. We've started with this villager breeder, then we built this cobble farm, we built this little iron farm here, a trading hall, a universal mob farm, a tree farm, a melon, pumpkin, sugarcane, bamboo farm, and a fungus farm. And we do have a slime farm. We didn't manage to build a witch farm, we ran out of time. But our universal mob farm surprisingly gives a lot of redstone. But probably a witch farm would be the next project, along with the shaka farm. And now we can set the filters. We need one filter for gold ingots. And the remaining filters are for gold nuggets. Let's check if the crafters are all empty. Oh, if something fell in during building, that's not good. And here come the ziglins. Let's grab a sweeping edge sword and start hitting. So you see we have both an XP farm and a gold farm. And I should put some soul sand here to kill the remaining items. Ah well, 24 hours and 10 minutes. Subtract the time, please, that I was standing there and explaining stuff to you in the six videos that I made. So I think we're comfortably under 24 hours, so that's fine. And this is a beautiful sight. Or we could actually also use netherrack. So we have netherrack here. This guy shouldn't be there. I'll have to check how these guys got there. Maybe they fell through the cobwebs. Okay, let's let them despawn. 
up here you are safe and perhaps we should do something to prevent these guys getting out at the bottom. But so far I'm happy with this farm. We've got plenty of XP and in a moment we'll have plenty of gold. But that's the end of the series. Hope you enjoyed it. Leave a comment if you think I should make another series and what should be the content of the series. Otherwise I say thanks for watching. Leave a like if you want to see more content like this. Please subscribe so that you don't miss any of my videos and see you next time. Bye bye.